Okay. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so um, this is, uh, I'm Chris Boyle, Head of Employment and Aptness Q&A uh, on employment law. Um, we were hoping to have an, account on, uh, an accountant on this uh, Q&A session. Unfortunately, uh, he's not been able to make it at the last minute, which is a bit of a shame, actually. I was hoping for some input there in terms of experience of the portal but um anyway we'll crack on with that and maybe next week we can uh, we can we can have an accountant with us uh, as well so um i guess just picking up from the last week so um as tends to happen we've had a reasonable um amount of activity over the last week obviously with the furlough open on the 20th the portal um we had some initial new or some new guidance published last friday and that's been updated as of yesterday as well um but the interestingly the employee guidance was um updated last week to include annual leave so if you recall previously we've had no reference whatsoever to annual leave and that was that's now been included within uh within the guidance so if i can quickly show you um this so you've probably seen um let me scroll down sorry that's the wrong one i the right one there. There we go. So we've now got reference to holiday pay. So this is the first time we've had it in the in in any of the guidance. I think if you, if you've been on the previous calls, we did have some reference in 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 uh, in the ACAS code of practice or the guide on holidays. So this is now confirming that holidays will accrue um, during the period of of um, furlough leave, and holidays can be taken but must be paid at um, at their normal rate. So that that deals with that red herring uh, that we've had or that issue that we've had previously that hadn't actually been, been been dealt with um in terms of questions just a bit of housekeeping as if, uh, if you've been on these before you'll know the script but if if you have a question if you can type question in capitals in the chat box uh and then we will go down in order as, as, as to how they've been inserted we will deal with people who've submitted questions in advance as well so there we go um the new employer's guidance that, ke that came out yesterday so, so the amended version um was a fairly small amendment so they've included uh, a chart demonstrating the uh, eligibility in terms of time date of employment um, and when somebody qualifies they've clarified some issues in terms of fixed term employees and when they can be rehired which effectively mirrors the uh, the employee the, the permanent employee part-time employees preference and also um, inserted reference in terms of collective agreements as well so there was some question as to whether some whether employees could be furloughed collectively the via a, a collective agreement with the trade union um, and the, the, the guidance confirms that is now and is now the case okay so we'll probably go for around 35 for uh, 35 40 minutes um so wayne could we have the first question please yep the uh, first question is from uh, sandra cairns so i'll just unmute sandra now hello hi sandra how are you you're right chris i'm very good how are you yeah, good, yeah. Loving the hairstyle. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, unfortunately the coronavirus haircut had to happen at some point. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the way it is. The clippers came out, so, yeah. My daughter uh, attacked my uh, son's hair the other day, so yeah, it's <laughs> looking a bit, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. right, um, I know you've just um, showed that snippet there from the latest guidance um, in terms of furlough and holidays and things. Um, so some of my couple of questions because there was a people management um, email out yesterday. Um, now in terms of the bank holidays because we give them in addition to a holiday entitlement, um, are we just, um, do we just need to top up that pay then for the um, bank holiday, you know, to 100% when they're on furlough? We don't have to do anything like, you know, like part-time employees, they also get, they get like a um, a proportionate amount added on to the holiday entitlement if a bank holiday falls on a non-working day we don't have to do any of that is it just literally topping up 
to the holiday. Is this if the employee is taking the holiday, the bank holiday? Well, we give them um, we give them bank holidays because we don't open um, on bank holidays. So yeah. we, we give them a holiday entitlement plus is it eight bank holidays a year? Right. Well, if the employee if um, if the decision during furlough is that the individual ta is taking the bank holiday, then they would just be paid as normal. Yeah. So you would effectively yeah. top if you're paying eighty percent now, you would have to pay them normal pay, um, as was previously on the guidance and the ACAS guidance. So you would effectively just pay them that it, you would have to top them up to 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 pay them yeah to, to pay them in, I guess in a normal fashion yeah 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 I mean the previous question was really I I guess the 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 initial concern or question was whether or not employees could actually take holiday during furlough leave and bank holiday being being a holiday but yeah on, on the basis they can then do that if if your position is that the employee has to take that bank holiday or it's mm. just treated as normal then you, you just pay them normally yeah okay um so if somebody does nobody has as yet but if somebody does ask for a holiday when they're on furlough um do we have to agree to it well the normal rules apply in terms of um the working time regulations and the contractual provisions around you not agreeing to holiday being taken so you could potentially refuse the holiday yeah albeit i'm not sure on what basis you would do that um mm. if if they want to take the holiday it can, it could benefit an employer for them to do that because obviously some employees have been talking about effectively using holiday during further to run down that that yeah, entitlement yeah. Which, yeah. is also, which, which ultimately is a cost to the business. So. Yeah, 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 right, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine then, thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Uh, next up, Chris, we've got um, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Or not? Nope. Nope, in that case, it will be uh, Gillian, Gillian Carothers. Gillian, hi. Hi, hi. I just need to get the point, it's not a coronavirus haircut. I have actually got to put it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you, well, it involves clippers, a, a coronavirus haircut. Place, so, yeah. <laughs> My husband keeps threatening, but I've got it <laughs> Um My question is around weekly and monthly pay. Hmm. Cause, so we've got some employees that are on weekly pay and are paid a week in arrears. And then we've got a few employees that are paid the last Friday of the month for the whole of the month. And I'm struggling to align the two because you've got to put your claim in the same dates for every employee. Mm. So at the mm. minute I'm thinking if I did it next week, in effect, the cutoff would be if I did next week's payroll on the Wednesday, because you're allowed to put it in before you actually pay it, yeah, then my cut off would be the 24th. Yeah. yeah. But then I couldn't do, because they get paid the last Friday of every month, I couldn't do the next one for another, in effect, five weeks. No, I, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I was looking at this yesterday. I think someone put a question on this, actually, on mm. Facebook, actually, one of our, in, in our forum, but... I don't know the answer to it at this moment. So all I know is it's probably something HMRC is going to have to clarify. All I know is that the claim period, there is there is one claim period, so you can't mix and match or have yeah. two different submissions within a claim period. So there is potential for there is potential for people to be to, to I guess I guess to not be fully paid for that period potentially. But I'm I'm not sure what the answer is at this moment in time. Um, from 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 the information, it's you know, it's it's possibly a payroll point, and it's possibly something HM, HMRC you're going to have to hopefully clarify. Unless anyone else has got a view on that, but um, it's it is a it is an it is an issue, and, and I know that questions are being asked of that, and it's probably one of the it's probably one of the many problems, as I'm told by accountants, that um, are going to have to be ironed out. I think over the next few weeks. Yeah. I kind of think for now I'll put in the first claim and then they might adjust it. Because the other issue that we've got is that not everybody's on set. So how they tell you to calculate it, and they say take an average day if it's part furlough and part of the month they've worked. But we've got people right. who do five and a half days on a Friday, for instance. Yeah. 
then uh, yeah yeah i'm just looking a very helpful there from jane james treadwell who's, who's on the chat i think james actually was on, was on facebook as well uh, having just thought about it he's saying that hmrc web chat said yesterday that claims can be made up to 14 days in advance so, ah. so that might help and that's yeah that's but that's one of the issues i'm sure that if i looked at it, oh my god this doesn't actually make make sense make any sense so if that is right and james has obviously had some input there then that that would help i think yeah that would help thank you okay thanks Gillian. okay and thanks james next question please uh, next up we've got uh, lindsay holt Hi, hi Chris, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good Lindsay, how are you? Not too bad. Um, good. Very quick one, hopefully quick to answer. Um, we offer our employees an interest-free loan, so basically an advance on their wages. Um, so we have a quantity of employees who, in the normal run of things, on this pay run would be having an amount deducted from their pay as a repayment for their loan. Um, for those that are furloughed, is there any guidance on whether we should or should not take that loan repayment back? I mean, ethically, I think we should just wait. Um, but is there any any rules around that at all? I I, I haven't seen any rules around it. Um, I know there was talk of of of, of suspending things like um, attachment of earnings that, from the court, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't seen any guide. I think I think that's an agreement you, that, that ultimately you're going to have with the employee. Yeah. Um, and it probably comes into the calculation of the. It probably comes into the calculation of the eighty percent, as well in terms of that payment not being part of that person's salary as of the tw as of the nineteenth or and or, or, or was the twenty eighth of Feb. Mm. Um, mm. So I think that's probably where the question. That's probably where the question lies. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, should it should that figure net of that payment net of that deduction be the figure i think i think it probably should yeah yeah mm. okay cool okay thank you that's easy yeah i think um there's another question in the chat box from sandra Cairn, so i can uh, i can unmute sandra again hi sorry chris uh, just one from our finance manager she asked me to ask um she's obviously input um well, the furlough claim covering the month of April, but we're now going to unfurlough um, an employee um, today. So he's, he kind of starts work again um, on Monday. Now he's been on furlough for three weeks. Now she's just asking, I mean, it might be one for the HMRC, is it okay mm. to adjust the May claim in when she inputs the, the figures into the portal when she's submitting the May one? Probably one for HMRC. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably no, one for fine. HMRC. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Next question, Wayne. Um, sorry, um, I'm just reading the chat again. We've got um, Ellie is uh, back on again. She can't get her microphone to work. Microphone to work. Um, so if you bear with me, I'll just uh, find her question. Okay, so uh, Ellie's question was, how frequently can you make a claim for furloughed workers to HMRC? Um, is there a minimum period between claims such as three weeks? Uh, you can make one claim in the claim period, which is, uh, which actually, well, it's stated as a month, but according, according to HMRC, um, you can um, define your claim period, so week, month, but it is, I, I think it appears to be, the common period appears to be a month. And, and, and you can make one claim for all furloughed employees within that claim period. Hopefully that answers that. That answers the question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we've not actually got any more questions, unless anyone has any. Does anyone have any questions they want to put in the chat box or? No? Friday afternoon, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, sun's out. Um, right, give me one sec. Question, yeah, there is one there, isn't there? So I've got Gavin, Gavin Biggs. Hmm. 
Gavin? You unmuted me now, yeah. Yeah, hi Gavin, how are you doing? Chris, you're right. Good, thank you. Good. We've got an interesting opportunity that's come our way. Um, business that's gone under, unfortunately, they made all the staff redundant. It's going through liquidation. Um, so all of their employment rights, redundancy and things like that will be paid out through the various schemes. Yeah. Um, if we pick up these contracts, we're going to obviously offer the, offer the opportunity to the previous staff. Yeah. So what's a reasonable period in terms of Chupi? Because um, obviously we want to be picking them up on Mellor's contracts, not uh, bringing them across on their original contracts. And also, because the, because the um, company has closed these units until trading returns to normal, we would want to put them straight onto furlough. So my yeah. understanding would be as long as they've been on a, an RTI submission prior to the 19th of March, then we will be able to put them straight onto furlough and claim that furlough pay. Yeah, so the Chupi, yeah, so I mean, uh, yeah, I'm assuming it is going to be a Chupi transfer. Is that, is, I mean, is it agreed that it would be a Chupi transfer? No, or, not or? yet. We're just exploring the options, Chris. Right, okay. Given that, given that they've gone through the government redundancy scheme in terms of picking up um, any redundancy um, costs on that basis, then we're thinking that it's not going to be Chupi. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, well, I'm, well, if it was Chupi, and they transferred after the 19th of March, which is going to be, they will qualify for, um, they will qualify for furlough if it's after the 19th of March, which it is going to be. Yeah. Um, the previous employer may have furloughed them there. They're on the payroll 28th, then the 19th. So, so that, that should be fine. And so what was the other question? In terms of, in terms of just making sure that if they, because we're not sure when they were last paid, so that you know, in terms of the the state that the business has been in, they might not have been paid on February the twenty eighth, for example. So what I'm thinking is, if their last RTI payroll submission was January, for example, and we're picking them up now, the fact that they've been paid on a January payroll would allow us to furlough them. Yeah, I mean, I think you'll be able to fit. If it is a cheapy transfer, then I think you'll be able to furlough them anyway because yeah, cheapy, cheapy, we would do, yeah, yeah. So I think that's fine, yeah. yeah. But if it's not a cheapy transfer, then yeah, I mean, if it's not a cheapy transfer, then um, they they will not have been on payroll as of the nineteenth of March. No, and, and therefore they will not qualify. Right. Okay. All right. So mm. uh, it's um, right. So we've got to decide which path we need to go down then, haven't we? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. All right. Cheers, mate. Have a good weekend. All right, mate. Andrew, thanks, Gavin. Chris? Yes, who's that? Chris? It's Steph from Thanks for Water Park. I actually emailed the question in. Um, I've had to unmute myself because no more questions. I'm on the telephone chat, so I'm not sure. I can't see anything that's going on, but I can hear you all. Yeah, I have sorry. a question for you. It's showing, Steph, it's showing you as a phone number. That's why we couldn't see you. Sorry about that. Oh, go on, Steph. Um, can, I just, can I just clarify with you? Um, we were paying 20%. Um, top up and unfortunately that's not sustainable going forward can we use people's holiday pay that they've collected prior to the year end and um, that wasn't used in any toil can we use that to top the 20 percent up now um <laughs> yeah i mean i guess the issue with holiday pay is and topping it up is that you can't and if it's statutory holiday we can't just okay. pay somebody it's, it, they have to actually take the holiday so you can't just top someone's pay up and say we're, we're just using a benefit under the contract i.e the holidays to top the pay up they would have to physically take the. Uh, so it's possible to it's possible to man, uh, i guess to manipulate the position where employees are asked to take holiday and therefore effectively that's then topped up and you claim the 80 percent back of the government you could do that. You just yeah. have to work out. You just have to work that out how it's going to work in practice. But you couldn't just pay them the, tw the an extra twenty percent and say that's some holiday entitlement. They'd actually physically have to have to take the holidays. So you'd have to effectively give them. You effectively have to give them notice under the working time regs or yeah, the contract. Yeah. To take. But yeah, it is. It's just that they, they worked Sorry. it last year. It was over and above hours worked. So a lot of it is toil that they've put in a pot to use in like March because we were only open at weekends and then they, we were closed so we weren't allowed to use it so it's been sat in a pot so if it's not statutory holiday and it is extra hours worked we can use that 
Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Fab. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Steph. Anyone else? Yeah, next up, we've got uh, Craig Red. Hi, Craig. And then uh, Marion Park. Hello. I'll just put my. Hi, Marion. Um, hi. Um, my question's about um, salary sacrifice. Um, our employees um, purchase holiday through um, salary sacrifice, and our holiday year, like most, is um, uh, April to April. So yeah. as of 28th of um, February, um, quite a few of our employees had bought holidays last year and therefore used the salary sacrifice. Um, that ended in March, um, but am I right in the assumption that their salary will be uh, the 80% that we can claim is based on the 28th of February, um, which is minus the um, salary sacrifice? It can be the 28th of February, or it can be the 19th of March. Yeah, and that doesn't help us because our payroll is uh, <laughs> right. after the 19th oh, right, of March. Okay. So, yeah, right, well, it will be yeah. the 28th of February then, yeah. So, yeah, it will, yeah. yeah. So, and then there's, there's other guidance, um, there's another part of the guidance that says that um, employees can opt out of salary sacrifice now. Sorry, say that again. Um, uh, so, another part of the guidance on salary sacrifice is that employees can opt out of salary sacrifice yes, yeah, now? Yes, they've got the yeah because it's a because it's a life event. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that still doesn't change the position of what their salary was on the twenty eighth of February, though, does it? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, so doesn't. we use but, the twenty eighth of February or the nineteenth of March. The, what their salary was there, and that and that unfortunately included salary sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, but I think what the guidance does say is that you can use the twenty eighth of February if you've already kind of furloughed staff but you can then use the 19th of march going forward so whether or not there's something you can do around that so that the salary sacrifice is is, uh, is removed and you can then move on using that adjusted figure that's possible um because the guidance does say when they change the date to 19th of march you said you can still use the 28th of for the first claim but going forward you can use the 19th of march so whether or not there's some contractual variation that you can look at um to to to, to lose the sorry sacrifice and that's that's possible i guess so yeah to gain some agreement yeah prior to i think yeah, i think you could probably do that i think you could do yeah. that okay okay thank you very much thank you okay thanks marianne thank you uh next question was from uh posh posh Karung. hi posh No. In which case, we'll move on to uh, James Griffiths. All right, Chris. Hi, uh, James. How you doing? Yeah, not bad. The first question was a joke question as to why you're doing this on a Friday afternoon when the sun's <laughs> shining, when it could well, be a much better time on a Monday or a Thursday morning. But anyway, let's leave that to one side. Um, we've not got any UK-based directors. Um, our CEO and main shareholder is is non-UK-based. Um, my HR are struggling. They say that it's excluded from the online portal. If you're a, if you've not got a UK director, you need to telephone them. The telephone system she is saying is not working and unreachable. Is the postal application the only other other way to do it? Because that she's uh, she's struggling. Uh, I think what you're going to have to do. I was talking to an accountant this afternoon and oh, prior to this. And they've opened the lines apparently now. So I, I know previously, as, as, as was mentioned, we, you were being advised to use web chat, but now the lines are open. So I think I'd, I think James, I'd probably give HMRC a call and see and see what can be done on that. Because that's probably another of the of the glitches that that the, that the um, portal is that he's seeing. Maybe it's pumping the wrong number then, because she she has been trying all this afternoon apparently to get through to them on the number. Well, that well, it. well, well yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm guessing the busy. I mean, it, oh, gosh, I mean, the figures released this morning weren't they? Uh, and seventy-one percent of UK businesses have 
you know, have submitted claims. So it, they're going to be absolutely, they're, they're, they're going to be wiped out in terms of claims. So I think just carry on and just try and, and try. But it, it, that, again, as I say, is probably another glitch within the portal, which I say, I'm, I'm sure people are finding all these different issues that, that hopefully will be resolved. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right, mate. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks. Uh, next question is from Sophie Zhang. Hi, yeah. Uh, my question is regarding the calculation of the part-time staff the furlough salary. Because um, we have a number of staff who earn a different amount of salary on a monthly basis due to the part-time contract. So when we claim the furlough for them, can you just advise what's the reference period we should use? Right, well, for part-time staff, so, so are they paid the same salary every week, did you say? So they're paid, they're paid the same? Uh, they're paid differently because they work in different hours. So some people like 10 hours per, month, per week, or some people like 20 hours per week. And maybe next month, they, they change like 25 hours. So, the, so that's working hours vary from month to month. So they're not like a, they got like a fixed amount of salary, like full-time staff. Okay, okay, yeah, well, I mean, if you've got varying variable pay, you you adopt the the second calculation within the guidance, which is um, this, you take this either the same month's earning from the previous year, so 2019, or the average monthly earnings for the 2019-2020 tax year. So you you, you take you take you, you take the highest of those calculations, and that that's that's how you work out the 80 percent. The calculation is based on a 12 months basis. Like and it's either the same month's earnings from the previous year, if they were employed, or the average monthly earnings for the 2019 2020 tax year. There is actually a very good, um, on Friday of last week, they, the government um, took out all the um, pay calculation information from the main employer's guidance and stuck it in a separate guidance, which helpfully, as of the 21st, has now got a calculator in it. So if you go on the government, if you go onto the government website, type in CGRS calculation um, or into Google, you'll see the calculator there. And, and in fact, it, it's, it's those calculations, I've just, it's, that, um, it's that methodology I've just explained, but you will, uh, you will actually be able to put the figures in and see uh, the furlough payment that, that, that can be claimed, the grant that can be claimed. Okay, thank you. All right, Sophie, thank you. Uh, Chris, there was just one further question. Um, this came across the chat from, from Ellie, who's got no microphone. Uh, can you make a, a March claim today um, and an April claim to HMRZ the following week, or do you have to wait a certain length of time between claims? Uh, point I'm, yeah, you, you can only make one claim within the claim period, which by default appears to be a month. You can, according to MR, HMRC, pick, pick your own claim period so it could in, it could in theory be a week but every employee in the organization needs to be on that claim in that claim period so if your claim period is a month everyone's got to be claimed on that and that can just be for that for, for uh, and those employees um, on that claim or it has to be for for uh, and for all those employees on on that claim okay yeah, I think I, I think that's all the questions we've got. Well, that's fine. That's that's half past three. I think we said half an hour, forty-five minutes. So I appreciate it. it's a Friday afternoon. Um, it was going to be Friday morning, James. Unfortunately, but, but fortunately things cropped up. But uh, there you go. Um, but we will do another one next week. Um, obviously, as things move on, um, there's going to be more interest and questions. I'm guessing around the portal. So, as I said, we were hoping to get an accountant on this week. We'll definitely get one on next week. Um, and we'll, we'll we'll try and pick a morning slot, which might be better for everyone. But other than that, if if anyone does have any questions, please do. If there are any HR three clients on, then please join the portal on Facebook. So we have a Facebook group, chat group, which we'll post a lot of information on. So please please go on there, and and you'll get a lot of information on there. And we'll try and update people as much as we can as we go along. Thank you very much. Good afternoon.